I have so much to say, but I'll, I'll try to keep it short. You all know that I was born on Old Route 66. Born in Slim Lake in 1927. Graduated from high school right at in Sullivan. Then went to Barber College in Pasadena, California on Colorado Boulevard, which is Route 66. You folks don't know my, my life, but I became a man when I was just 15 or 16 years old, when my three brothers were drafted for World War I, and I became the oldest son in the family. So I became a man, literally became a man. I became my father's helper, and I learned so much from my father and mother's way of living. And living with three older brothers and three older sisters, I also learned so much from them. But back then, growing up in the Depression, you had to make do with what you had. You couldn't wish for it. You couldn't go around moping about it. Everyone had to work together just to eat. So when I am asked, what makes me go, 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 it's having been raised and growing back then, knowing that if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. I, be I became very handy with my hands. I'm not going to go through everything that I have made because it goes on and on and on. But, but, but I, I was going to be a finished carpenter and probably have to leave Seligman. So my mother and father probably had an idea. So when I was in the 10th grade, my mother says, Angel, why don't you try barbering? So immediately, I didn't even think about it. I just started cutting hair at home. My father was a self-taught barber, completely self-taught. He taught himself the barber profession. I went to barber college. So when my mother asked me to try barbering, we brought my dad's barber chair that he brought April the 6th, 1926, for dollars brought her home, and I started cutting hair <laughs> to any of the boys in high school that would let me. <laughs> so before I even went to barber college, I thought I was a barber. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that story. <laughs> <laughs> So anyhow, I was born on Old Route 66, went to Barber College in Pasadena on Route 66, served my apprenticeship in Windows, Arizona on Route 66, opened my dad's and mother's old pool hall and barber shop on Old Route 66, stayed there for 22 years, then moved to the original location where we're at now. Incidentally, my parents went broke when they rerouted the highway, Route 66, in front of his business to where it is now. He went broke, and we were, we were gonna join the Great Wrath and go to California, another story. <laughs> so folks, the town died September 22nd, 1978 in Seligman when our government finished building 100 miles of freeway from Kingman, Arizona to Ashfork, Arizona. Kingman is only about 50-some miles from the Arizona, California border. We are, Seligman is 84 miles from, Flags, from Kingman. Ashfork is 21 miles from Seligman. So when they opened the freeway, the traveling public took to I-40 like ducks take to water. So Lickman died at about 2.30 in the afternoon. History says that there were 9,000 automobiles using Route 66 for Sligman every 24 hours. My brains go back to then. 
It was a sad, sad moment. And for 10 years, no one cared whether we were alive or dead. County officials, state officials, the feds, no one cared. It was not only tough, it was like going back into the depression. To make matters worse, there wasn't one mildly sign between Flagstaff, Arizona, and Asheville, a distance of 50 miles. My brother Juan of the world famous no cap came in to get a haircut one day and he says, Angel, there isn't a, I says, Juan, quit joking with me. You never met Juan, he liked the joke. Yeah. I says, Juan, you don't have to joke with me. I know there's signs. He says, next time you go to Flagstaff, you don't believe me, check it out. Now, one mile is signed to talk about Sullivan. So the traveling public were stopping in Williams to gas up, to eat, spend the night. So they became became dead for 10 long years. But here's what we human beings, most of us don't realize. We don't know what we have until we lose it. And you know where I learned that so much, more than ever, from the traveling public. After we got bypassed, I don't know how soon it was because we were dead for 10 years. A few traveling people began to come back in the saloon. These people were in their late 60s or 70s. They came into our pool hall, which it was a pool hall back then, and three pool tables, a jukebox, pinball machine, etc. I was still cutting hair then, naturally. The few that stopped in there, they told me the same thing I heard for years, over and over and over. These people told me, when I was a little boy, when I was a little girl, this has got to be the highway that my parents traveled to California from the Midwestern states when it quit raining in the Midwestern states for five years. I heard it over and over and over. They all sounded like you recording. It finally got me to thinking, what are you looking for? You got what you wanted, a highway that takes you from point A to point B at 75, 80, 90 miles an hour, whatever you get away with. <laughs> what do you want here? What are you doing here? I asked myself. It finally dawned on me they were looking for yesterday. They were looking for America of yesterday. I am not against the conglomerate big businesses, but I have ordered a hamburger and our big businesses, our snow caps and whatever. You put your order in, they, they give you a piece of paper with a number, and when you order ready, number 68, you are not an individual, you're a number. In traveling Route 66, you are an individual. We are America of yesterday. Route 66 is more America of yesterday than the big, big, big cities, and I have nothing against the big cities. We need them. We need a little bit of everything. But in, in given Route 66 is a story rebirth, we take the people back to yesterday. Living today, I was just having a conversation with my wife. We sit under the porch to get some. And I was telling my wife, sweetheart, you and I have lived in two different worlds. The world that we grew up in, the world we grew up in, and the world today. The world today is beautiful, but it's not the world of yesterday. Our young boys and girls are not getting the education that they should. They're so busy with a little thing. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like mother and father 
are more in love with their children, they're more in love with themselves than they are their children. I retired from cutting hair, doing barber work, and I have spent a lot of time with my wife in the kitchen. I never realized how much work a mother has to do to put food on the table. Just chopping onions, just chopping carrots. It's a job. Because <laughs> I do it. <laughs> I'm her helper. So, in Giving Raw 66, as a story of rebirth, and bringing back so much of America into today's world, it is so important. And here we go at a meeting talking about preservation. We desperately, we desperately need to educate our children about yesterday. Yes, tomorrow, today is important. But so much of yesterday has been forgotten, not just the buildings, not just the roads, the way, of, the way of life as it was and it can be. I want to tell you this. When we gave Route 66 this historic rebirth, people started coming into our place of business. My wife became the first manager of our Vilma and Angels. Rock 6 gift shop, and if we sold a t-shirt a day, we thought we were doing good. When we sold three t-shirts a day, man, we were really uptown. <laughs> but what I want to tell you about this, we put a little book on the table so that the tourists could sign it. And this tells a lot about us. Seven out of the ten signatures through the day that people signed were international. This tells me that we in America, the average person, we take our beautiful country for granted. Our country has not been destroyed by wars like Germany has, like France, like other countries. They value that we gave Route 66 as historic rebirth, that we saved it. And they were the ones that were right there supporting us more than the American people. We take our country for granted. Believe me, the average person. So I am so happy to be sitting here in, in DC at this beautiful, beautiful location with what's going on with this beautiful project. We need this project. America needs to know about preservation. Uh, traveling public have told me, I started traveling from Chicago, Illinois, and you people on Route 66 up to right here in Sligman, you're like one big family. Oh, that's beautiful. And Dad Crystal wanted to mention something. Well, I was thinking, don't you think we should sing the song that we always Aww. start every meeting with, Angel? <laughs> yes. Come on, Angel, let's go. Wow. You can do it. Give him a key. <laughs> <laughs> can I start in? Yes. yes. Let's do it. If you ever try to the west, west, travel my highway, the highway that's the best, best. Get your kicks on Route 66. It winds from Chicago to LA, more than 2,000 miles all the way. Get your kicks on Route 66. Now you go to see Louis, Joplin, Missouri, and Oklahoma City. Look mighty pretty. You see Amarillo, Gallup, New Mexico, Fresh of Arizona. Don't forget Winona, Kingman, Barstow, San Bernardino, and June. Get hip to this country trip when you make that California trip. Get your kicks on Route 66. 
including Selena. Hey.